Spanish-American paintings from Mexico. In the past, not considered good enough to be high art, but not low enough to be folk art. But now they are commanding center stage in New York at the Met. Judge for yourself. In the spring of 2018, the Metropolitan Museum of Art unveiled a new exhibition, Painted in Mexico. It focuses on the vitality and inventiveness of local artists in 18th century Mexico, which the conquerors called New Spain. This exhibition was organized um, by uh, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art in collaboration with Fomento Cultural Banamex, is comprised of approximately 100 paintings. The research um, upon which this exhibition is based um, took about six years of field work. Very large percentage of these paintings have never been seen outside Mexico. After nearly two centuries of Spanish colonization, locally born artists were painting in the European tradition, but with their own style and iconographies there was a fully developed art industry. Shipments of new paintings to Spain often carried a proud signature by local artists. A number of the paintings are signed Pinxit Mexiki, which means painted in Mexico. Religious themes dominated. Large-scale paintings in these galleries were used to decorate churches, government buildings, and universities. One of the major functions of these Mexican paintings is storytelling. The paintings were tools the church and state used to educate new worshipers. Unique to these Mexican artworks, the storytelling function was further developed by adding small texts right in the middle of the paintings. This is from a very large altarpiece dedicated um, to St. John of Nepomuk uh, from Eastern Europe. Um, St. John of Nepomuk was killed by the King of Bohemia because he refused to give up the secrets of his wife's confessional. So he was thrown into the Moldova River. Uh, you see his body floating in the Moldova River, illuminated by stars uh, in the water. Virgin of Guadalupe is the special saint worshipped in New Spain by local people. The Virgin Mary appeared before Juan Diego, a Mexican peasant, and told him to build a new church. But no one believed him. As proof, on her fourth appearance, Mary gave Juan Diego some non-native Castilian roses. When Diego laid them before the archbishop, the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe miraculously appeared on Diego's cloak. You see the vision of the Virgin hovering above the Valley of Mexico. If you, if you look right here in the middle of it, is, is the shrine where the, uh, where the image is venerated. When girls moved into the convent to become nuns and thus married to Christ, they gave up the luxuries of life outside the convent. This is a, a young woman um, um, on the eve of her entry into a convent. It's the sort of uh, portrait that um, families commissioned um, to commemorate their daughters, um, whom they might not see again. These are uh, depictions of young women after they've entered um, the convent. Uh, she's wearing a, a type of um, devotional painting called an escudo de monja, or a, a nun's badge or a nun's shield. These are little little paintings that um, simultaneously served as items of personal adornment on special occasions, um, but were also um, used for private devotion. By the 18th century, a serenity had settled into native Mexican church art. 
This is a painting of the divine spouse or the divine bridegroom. Um, it, it was certainly painted for a convent of, of nuns. Um, and many of the flowers, uh, and in particular the irises, are shown with emblems of the passion painted on them. Irises are traditionally seen as symbols of the Virgin's sorrows. Other non-religious subjects are also represented in the exhibition, like this painted screen. It's called a biombo, um, which is a, actually a corruption of a Japanese word for a folding screen. So we've got an Asian format and the French 18th century theme um, and um, individual types. She's wearing a reboso, which is a, a typical clothing from Mexico. Um, these musicians um, are actually playing a, a piece of music. It was a very famous minuet. And then over here, the, you know, this wonderful image of the, the man reclining. The soldier here, or the hunter rather, is what he's been hunt are not necessarily animals, but, but young ladies. Costa paintings were major export items and welcomed in Spain. These were portraits of racially mixed families, a kind of propaganda to show a peaceful, racially mixed society in the new continent. In order to maintain control in the new continent, the Costa system was introduced. Everyone's social and economic rank depended on bloodlines. European-born whites were on top, then whites born in the Americas. If Indians or blacks had some white blood, they were considered above the local Indians and only blacks at the bottom could be slaves. Although local Indians could not be enslaved, they could be forced to work on church and government projects to pay tribute, taxes. Uh, this particular work um, comes from a set of casta paintings. Um, there were originally 16 of them, but this is the original format. It could be rolled up in the Espanol y Morisca Albina. The Spaniard is, is shown as a soldier and his spouse, the Morisca. Morisca was a, a term that designated a mixture between Spaniard and a mulatto. And their child is, is an albino. Interestingly, albino here was considered a race instead of a genetic alteration. And perhaps it had religious implications that even a colored family could have miracles. From these 18th century paintings, we can see visual proof of how the Europeans maintained their control over the Americas by using religion and the Costa system to ensure white Europeans would remain in power. <laughs>